All right, happy Tuesday morning to you all. The day after the eclipse, and we're all still here. No rapture yet. The world didn't end. The moon passed in front of the sun. A few places got dark. We were cloudy, didn't see it. It was totally obscured by uh, cloud cover here and uh, in most other places in uh, Texas. But uh, a few of the lucky folks, uh, like my buddies uh, up in uh, Arkansas, uh, got to see it under clear skies. Uh, Plainview, Arkansas area was apparently crystal clear, so awesome, man. Wish I could have joined you boys, uh, Neil, Murnell, Doug. Uh, they had a good time, reportedly. So, anywho, uh, I'm on the road for a quick work commute this afternoon. It's 12.52, and I've got to go to uh, a client site just down the street. You have ridden with me there many times. Usually I go on my littler bikes, but this one is already ready to go and it might rain on me. Uh, so I didn't want to be on the Navi or the smaller bikes uh, and having to carry a backpack. So I have my uh, laptop and stuff over here and my pannier and my rain gear over in the other side. So if I uh, get rained on, at least I've got some backup plan. And I'm not carrying a backpack. That's the biggest deal. <laughs> anyway, this morning, uh, I've been working from home and replying to emails and YouTube comments and everything else. And in my YouTube feed, a channel popped up that I had looked at a long time ago, a couple years ago or so, uh, Ride with Alex. And he's got a series where he toured... Uh, out of Romania and uh, across into Turkey and you know it's a couple thousand kilometer uh, trip that was really cool and uh, I'm already binge watching that series I got I think I'm on episode four or five right now <laughs> I just paused it when I left the house it's still sitting on my phone uh, anyway if you haven't checked out Ride with Alex on uh, YouTube go check his channel out he's got a lot of small bore content and fun stuff And what's funny to me and very entertaining is Alex, I'm presuming is his name. I'm just going off of his uh, channel name. Uh, his mannerisms, language, uh, colloquialisms, uh, slang, all that kind of stuff is very, very similar to Southern U.S. Uh, I mean, if he didn't have a slight Romanian accent, uh, you would think the guy was a Texan. It's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> the, his thought patterns, speech patterns, uh, everything are uh, just right in line with us down here in Texas. It's funny. Anyway, uh, his adventure uh, going across Europe is uh, an interesting watch. And I was very surprised at some of the scenery that he's showing, uh, the back highways going through the, the mountains and trees and stuff like that. If you didn't know better, you would think he was in uh, Tennessee or you know Missouri or Arkansas or something like that. All of my favorite uh, riding and stomping grounds. Man, oh man, just look at this. <laughs> What's the temperature? 22 degrees. Perfect. Perfect riding temperature. And a bit of a switchback. Let's get it. Let's get Danny tucked into the corner. Yeah, boy. Very nice roads over there. And it seems like traffic patterns are very similar to uh, the U.S. You know, everybody's driving on the right-hand side of the road. Uh, seems like traffic is fairly organized. Might be a nice place to visit. If all of Romania is uh, similar to Alex's demeanor and uh, overall mentality, hell, that might be a great place to live. I've been looking for a new place to live. Most likely somewhere here in the US. My original escape plan was to be an expat living down in uh, Brazil, but uh, Brazil's kind of gone to hell in a handbasket over the last few years. And it doesn't show any signs of getting better. They're following the NWO and uh, elite mentalities over there as far as their uh, economics and politics go. So it's not looking good. I don't know how my retirement is going to be. 
but anyway, uh, Romania and uh, some of the countries that he's gone through seem uh, very Western aligned as far as their infrastructure and mindset. I'd love to go visit. I have a few open invitations from viewers in the UK and Ireland and uh, all over the place uh, that have said, hey, come on over, we'll, uh, we'll put you up, take you for rides around the countryside, that'd be great. And I presume they're still open invites. <laughs> I haven't had those, uh, those offers or invitations in the last uh, couple years, but most of that, again, surprisingly, has been due to the uh, small bore videos, uh, Super Cub rides, PCX rides, stuff like that, uh, that has brought out those people in the comments, you know, uh, people of similar mind and similar hobby uh, that enjoy small bore content. So it's, you know, small bore lifestyle is fantastic. I love it. Because it's about the riding, you know. I, I think that's really what has uh, made me gravitate back toward small bore life. Yeah, you, everyone goes through that evolution in their, their riding careers, or almost everyone does. You start out on small bikes, learning, you know, as a teenager or whatever, and then you graduate up to bigger, faster bikes, you know, longer distances, crazy stuff like that. Uh, and some people never come back full circle toward the uh, the small bore life again. They just stay with the bigger, faster equals better mentality. Uh, and here in the States, that's kind of a it's a common theme because our distances are so vast between areas you know if you're not in one of the really dense metropolitan centers uh, if you live you know even out here where i do on you know in houston on the edge of houston and katy my commute just to get to my office is 18 miles you know my average commute day riding to a client site or something like that uh, is up around 50 to 60 miles minimum per day uh, so we just have a lot of ground to cover and that lends itself toward uh, bigger faster machines and, and of course you get into the arms race with the crazy cagers in their uh, SUVs and trucks and everything all going 85 90 miles an hour trying to kill anything smaller than them on the road and then it kind of puts you in uh, predator or prey mode so you got to be ready to fight that battle and unfortunately you can usually only fight that battle on a bigger or faster machine it's uh, a little dicey to be out there on small stuff so anyway you know back to the evolution of things i've i've come back around to small bore life because it's about the riding it's not about the going faster or stunting or you know my balls are bigger because my bike goes faster kind of nonsense it's just get out and enjoy it on two wheels. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, whatever bike you have, that's the bike to do it on. Go, just get out and do it. Oh, see, we got more geniuses. Uh, I'm gonna let that guy in because I just know he's gonna step on me anyway. Go. I think that's what kind of interests me about the scooter community in general and Usually, you know, traditionally speaking, uh, scooters are the the shunned ones, the uh, the undesirables in the motorcycling community because scooters here in the U.S. are looked down upon. Uh, it's a an inferior mode of motorcycling for people who, who can't handle the real bikes, the bigger bikes. Yeah, blow it out your ass, whatever. <laughs> Two wheels, having fun, out in the air, not in a cage, that counts. I don't care what anybody says. And I've said it once, I'll say it again. The guys that are out there on small bikes are really the ones that deserve the nod of respect because it's harder to do it on the small bikes, especially when you're fighting crazy cagers and uh, everybody in their arms race to go faster and be mean on the roads. The guys on the little bikes are the ones getting bullied, so if they've got the, the fortitude and the patience to put up with it, fuck, congratulations, man. And I know, because I do it. <laughs> and it's not just because I do it that I say that, it's just the truth, I mean, come on. If you've got a big bike and you got a small bike and you ride them both in the same environments, you know the struggle, you know, uh, you know the difference in how people treat you on the road uh, so again the guys riding the small bore bikes uh, especially when they've got a choice those are the ones that uh, are really out there doing it
All right, I'm gonna go in and take care of my uh, chores in here. I'm not even gonna bother turning the bike around. I'm just gonna leave it just like this. I will catch up with you in a bit, I hope. Okay, I'm back a couple hours and change later. If I can figure out which side is up on this silly jacket. There it is. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping I was going to get out of here and beat the rain, but it doesn't look like it. It's looking a little misty out there, and the road is definitely wet over here. So looks like I might get a little bit wet on the way home. Luckily, I don't have very far to go. Uh, so we'll see how that plays. Anyway, I uh, got my chores done here. And uh, the... Uh, Binge watching saga continued. <laughs> I kept uh, ride with Alex uh, running on my uh, Bluetooth uh, headset while I was working, listening to that in the background, watching him uh, travel through uh, Turkey and into Georgia, I guess, is where I left off. Episode 7, uh, something like that, or day 7. <laughs> He's funny, man. <laughs> He's hilarious. It's so funny listening to all the the slang and the the sayings and stuff. Uh, I don't know if he ever spent time in the U.S., but uh, he certainly has a grasp of our language. Pretty funny, even uh, you know movie slang and stuff like that. Uh, Smokey and the Bandit and stuff. I was pretty surprised. He's he said in the comments that's one of his uh, favorite shows, favorite movies. Let's see if I can get out of here and not make anybody uh, scared or annoyed with me. This bike is a little bit on the loud side. Oh no, I'll let you go this way. <laughs> Roll it out of here and be polite before I fire it up. It's raining. Misting. Didn't bring anything for my uh, legs, but eh, oh well. Sadite, sadite. I don't have uh, my riding boots on either, so if it really starts coming down, I'm going to have soggy feet. It's alright. These 511s have been uh, soaked many times. Held up well. I need to get some new ones. I haven't... Uh, I haven't had any fresh ones in a while. These are going on a year and a half old. They've been through uh, God knows how many miles and uh, a couple of downs. So anyway, I'm enjoying uh, Alex's, uh, what is he calling it, the Trans-Eurasia whatever uh, tour. It's fun. I haven't watched any of his other stuff. He's got a lot more uh, recent videos, bike reviews and product reviews and stuff like that. I'll have to check them out. His market is decidedly different than the U.S. You know, they get different bikes and uh, flavors over there that we'll never see here on our shores. Uh, a lot of the small bikes and scooters and things that just aren't imported here. watching my mirrors like a hawk because the people in rush hour here are speeding up on wet concrete. I don't need to get rear-ended again. I've had enough of that. Oh, please go while it's still green. I don't want to sit here in the rain. Take the back road and avoid the I-10 frontage road because I know that's going to be a shit show. Oh, Houston in the rain in rush hour. Three things that do not blend well. the most uh, dicey time to ride 
drive as well, but especially ride. Uh, when it's just misting like this and it's not really raining, uh, it hasn't lifted the uh, crap up off the road and washed it away yet. It's just floating, you know, you get that oily, slimy layer on top. It's like riding on wet snot. In a car, you know, you can slip and slide around okay and not really uh, be too much worse for the wear as long as you don't make contact anywhere with anybody else. But on a bike, <laughs> you end up on your butt or under the bike, which is worse. It's, it's damn no good. Andretti indoor racing. I need to go do that sometime. I've been in there to spectate a couple times, but I didn't ride, drive, whatever. You guys are probably looking at a whole bunch of schmoo because my visor is certainly covered. You know, I haven't had this helmet out in the rain in a long time. This is getting to be a pretty old lid. Uh, I've had this thing probably going on 10 years now. I bought it just before my 2016 trip. So I guess I got it in 15. It's nine years old. Uh, my 2016 road trip that I took on the XT250 up to uh, Oklahoma during my dad's uh, hospital stay for open heart surgery and all that. And uh, when I left there, I went north and up and around and it was a big long uh, off-road adventure trip. Came back through uh, Missouri and Arkansas, did a ton of uh, off-road single track, crazy off the grid stuff. I was off the grid for two, almost three days. Just getting lost in the mountains. Good fun. I, I lost all of that video footage a couple, three years ago. I had intended on trying to go back and make something useful out of it, but it was back before GoPro cameras got good with the uh, image stabilization and all that. I did it with a Hero Session 4, uh, which didn't have any image stabilization at all, and I didn't have a helmet mic. But I did capture quite a bit of good off-road, uh, you know, moderate speed stuff uh, in the boonies. And I was doing all that with just roll charts. No, I had a GPS, but I wasn't relying on the GPS. So uh, it was just roll charts. And yeah, I should go ahead and turn here. This will be easier. I'll take the back road. Um, snotty, slimy stripes. Um, yeah, it was a fun adventure. Uh, but anyway, I lost all the video. I had it on a spare hard drive, uh, Western Digital you know, two terabyte drive or something like that, uh, that I left in my laptop bag in my car and uh, there were a bunch of homes and cars in our neighborhood that got burglarized uh, a few years ago and uh, they stole my laptop bag and some stuff out of my garage and everything else. Broke through my front gate on the driveway and took my stuff and I didn't have those uh, video files backed up anywhere else unfortunately too bad anyway back to the thought I haven't had this thing out in the rain and as I remember uh, it leaks like a sieve in the rain all around the uh, helmet or uh, sorry the face shield gasket it's bad like real bad yeah, this is my turn. Yeah, my legs are so... Boots aren't quite swamp yet, but they're getting there. Not wearing my rain gloves or, uh, you know, waterproof gloves either. These, uh, these are my destroyed Olympias. I have a new, uh pair of Olympia still sitting in the uh, package that I've been waiting to uncork with my new uh, showy Neotech 2 helmet that I bought uh, because the previous set of those items, gloves and helmet, were destroyed in my uh, wreck back in uh, October. Anyway, uh, these are fun because when they get wet, notice my Velcro is dead, um, when they get wet they stain your hands black. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the dye from the, the gloves just transfers straight to your skin. It's crazy. And you can wash these things, you know, just hand wash them. Uh, mild detergent, you know, 
lukewarm water, whatever. You can wash them as many times as you want, let them dry, and they will still bleed every single time they get wet. It's crazy. I had a... Uh, the previous set of these uh, were probably going on three, maybe almost four years old, and uh, they had gotten rained on so many times I couldn't count, and they always stained my hands black. My waterproof ones that I wear, the held air and dries, don't stain my hands, but I've been a little disappointed in their waterproofedness. Uh, the uh, Gore-Tex layer didn't serve me too well on the last few big road trips that I did. But those were extended downpours, uh, you know, a couple hours plus of heavy, heavy rain. And at first I thought that it was perspiration or just condensation, you know, that it made me totally soaked inside. But I, I realized after about the second or third time that that happened that no, was, the gloves were actually leaking. Uh, because I would start getting wet fingertips within just a few minutes of uh, heavy downpour. So it's a little depressing. My first pair of those never did that, uh, but my first pair got stolen in you know, a long time ago, you know, many years ago at a uh, diner. I left the helmet and the gloves sitting out on the bike, went inside to get some food, came back out, and my gloves were gone. They left my helmet, but they stole my gloves. Bastards. Whoever it was wanted my sweaty held air and dries. And when you have to replace them at you know, 300 bucks a pop or whatever they are, that hurts, man. Note to self, don't leave them on the bike. I try to do that intentionally, you know, at least leave them out in the sun so they dry out a little bit uh, from perspiration or whatever. But I guess you gotta be careful about where you leave your stuff and who you might be uh, hanging around. And I didn't see any other uh, bikes in the parking lot when I left the, the bike sitting there, so it wasn't other riders, or at least not you know, people on bikes that stole my gloves. Must have been another asshole wannabe rider that uh, thought, oh, those look fun. So far we've escaped all the crazy weather. It's been uh, raining cats and dogs, just absolutely storming like crazy. A lot of lightning, heavy, heavy rain all north and uh, east of the Houston Metro all day. Uh, even yesterday, it's been, it was pretty crazy. Uh, I've been watching the weather radar today and it's just been a complete rain out uh, from about the woodlands and further north. But it hasn't been hitting us much yet. It's all banding and kind of setting up just north of us. And it's creeping down a little bit as it's banding. But the, the radar track is interesting to look at. Because it's not blowing through here. It's uh, like spawning north of the city. Watch these stripes. The, uh, the mifflers I've got on here are pretty sticky. I, I don't really notice them misbehaving too much on wet pavement. But when the pavement's just barely wet, these uh, stripes and stuff at intersections get a little greasy. Are we going? Are we going before it turns red? No. That guy ran a hard red. Hey, at least it's not a heavy downpour. I'm not getting swamp balls. This would be a nice afternoon. You just lay out in a hammock under the gazebo. Temperature's nice. Little breeze, little drizzle. 
quite nice actually. This is good camping weather right here. Well, home again, home again. I'll uh, continue binge watching uh, Ride with Alex and uh, try to put a couple of these vlogs, uh, ride vlogs, in the uh, queue. We'll see how it goes. You gonna howl? Huh? Howl? Howl? Good girl. <laughs> I'll catch y'all later. <laughs>